Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. I'm coming to you today with your weekly oracle card guidance and we have three uh, different oracle card decks here. They have quite a different energy. So see if you can pick up that and you can make your selection here between the first deck, the second or the third. The first deck being the gods and goddesses. Uh, card deck, the second being your getting into the vortex deck. And the third is your gateway oracle cards by Denise Lynn. So you may go down to the description box below where you'll find the timestamp. All right, so go ahead, make your selection and you can go directly to your reading. In the meantime, I'm going to start with the um, God and Goddesses uh, deck here, the first deck. For those of you who've chosen the first option here, the question is, what do you need to know right now? What is the answer to the question that you have in your heart? Okay, so it feels to me that, oops, it's just flown away. Feels to me that this is the card. And it's called Lord Kapila, the knower of matter and spirit. Lord Kapila. Okay, so um, the, these cards have, you know, uh, an image here with a name and a caption. So I'm going to go ahead and read that meditation for you right now. It says, I take refuge in Lord Kapila, the fully independent, powerful and transcendental, transcendental Lord. He is the master of the sum total of matter and the element of time. He is identical to the universe, both because he is all pervading and because he is its cause. Okay. And the blessings here are scientific knowledge, power of discrimination, divine understanding, and liberation, knowledge and mastery of the material elements, the knower of of matter and spirit. For me, the feeling of this card that this card gives me is actually more like let's just surrender and go with the flow. Let's just be very much in the moment, in the in the second, um, and be very present with ourselves. So what they're showing to me is that. Um, you might have come from a bit of turbulence or you might be headed into some very subtle turbulence in the in the week ahead and the week, in the next 10 days or something like this. And what they're saying to me is that the way in which to deal with this is to be very much in the present, to bring yourself, keep bringing yourself back to the moment that you're in, you know, whether it's you, you know, peeling a carrot or washing some dishes or packing your books into your bag or shelving your things or, or doing your laundry or driving to work, or taking the subway, whatever you're doing, keep yourself exactly in that moment. And the way to do that is basically to, to see what are you feeling in that moment? What are you hearing? What are you smelling? And, you know, what are, you, are your five senses engaged in that moment? Because what, they, what, what, what they're saying to me is that the way in which you're going to be able to get through this time or the best way in order to, to work through this time is simply to be engaged in that given moment uh, and not let your mind wander off, not be, not be lost in your mind, not be lost in your thoughts, don't be thinking too much, don't be worrying about what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, etc. Because what they're saying to me here is that the moment of manifestation is past or of course you can always manifest, but something that you've placed You've, you, you've already placed your manifestation or your wish into being. And the only way to let it happen or to let it manifest, let it come to be, into being, is to simply let go and surrender to what is before you at this moment. That is the main message that I am getting for you here um, with this. The other message I'm getting here is that the worry or the, 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 the thinking, the overthinking, that you've been doing or that you've been you're prone to perhaps you've not been doing it recently perhaps you're just prone to it but what they're saying is that it's wearing away at you it's making you a wary traveler on your path and they're saying to me that this is what you need to prevent because it's making you older it's wearing you away it's you, you are very worried you're very tired you are very you it's almost like you can have so much more energy and you can feel so much better if you engage in the given moment and if you can just experience joy as you go along. 
you know, experience wonder and joy at everything that you're facing right now. And the way to do that is to be in the moment because actually what you're dealing with or what you have to worry about is not happening right now in this moment. It's happened something, something's happened already and something's going to be happening in the future. But right now, while you are listening to this video, for instance, take, pay attention to what you're hearing, what you're seeing, how, you know, what, what you're feeling as a result of it. And don't be worried about what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so that's just a, an example of, of you know, staying in, in the moment. Uh, and as a result of that, it's going to bring you back to a space of innocence. Okay, because the the maze in your mind that you're, that you're lost in, these thoughts that you're lost in, is, uh, as mentioned, is making you a weary traveler. And so when you step out of this maze and you don't interact with it, you can simply be. And when you simply be, it's going to bring you back to a space of innocence and stillness and purity. And and then you're going to feel like yourself again. All right. So that's the message I'm getting for you this week. It's quite specific, I think. And it, uh, I feel that it's also quite general and quite vague. Uh, of course, you can give this message to somebody at any point. But that's what I'm feeling for you. Let me know if it resonates with you, okay? Um, so yeah, thank you for those of you who've come by. I hope that's helped you. And moving on now to the next deck of cards. So we have here the um, Esther and Jerry Hicks uh, Teachings of Abraham Relationship Cards. And the card, uh, the deck is called Getting Into the Vortex. So for those of you who've come by today, who've chosen the second option, what is it that you need to hear right now? What is the answer to the question in your heart? Oh. Okay, that's flown out. And I think I'm going to go with it, okay? So I'm just going to leave this here, but I, I feel like there might be something more here. I'm just going to see. Okay, that's flown out, but I feel that it was just me. Um, it's always just me, but I just don't feel that card's relevant. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we have two different cards here. And the first one states... The universal law of attraction is managing my expansion. And the second card here is relationships I don't want clarify those I do want. Okay, so this these cards are giving me the feeling that um, that here we are in a situation where we can choose. Okay, so for in the previous deck, um, it felt like the manifestation that the person was making, like putting their thoughts into being manifested was behind them already and they were in the process of manifesting but here it feels like you are beginning your manifestation and it's talking about it for me when I when I see these cards together especially I feel like you are at the beginning you're at the precipice of a new phase in your life and you're actually beginning anew and this has to do with relationships it has to do with work it has it's a completely new phase in your life like you're really standing at the precipice of something brand new. You're leaving all behind in the past and you're starting all anew. And so what they're saying to me is that you can decide at this moment what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. Perhaps you've been in certain relationships, whether it be friendships or romantic relationships or family relationships, which you felt that you had to be in, that you were, you had a duty to be in it or you were... You needed to be there and it felt burdensome for you in some way. It felt like it just, it just wasn't right for you. And it felt like these people are not supporting you as you go ahead. Well, now is the moment in which you can reevaluate those relationships and see if you actually really want these people in your life. Um, that's one thing. And what, what I'm hearing here so clearly and what the card actually says is that, well, for me, what it says is that, if you put away the people from your life that you don't need anymore, or not to say that you can just you should just dispose of people, but if you pay less attention to people, uh, or you give less of your time, your valuable, precious time, to people who are not supporting you in your path, if you if you give less of your time to these people, 
then you'll be making more space in your life for those who actually are going to be there, who are going to come in and love you and support you and be your companions in this lifetime, whether it be a romantic companion or whether it's just be a friendship or whether it be somebody who becomes so close to you that they would uh, act as a family member. So here, what I'm hearing is that, you know, where is it that you've been spending so much of your time not actually paying attention to what your needs are and losing your time and your energy to people who are not really supporting you. This is very much the feeling for me that I'm getting from this card. And there's so many ways in which you need, you can go. There's so many choices. You have an infinite amount of choices that you can make and an infinite amount of roads that you can take. You know, don't just think, oh, I can only do this or I can only do that. Encourage yourself to think outside of the box and think in ways in which you haven't thought before about what it is that you can do. What are your skill sets really? I feel you're looking for a new job or you're moving and you You've only thought about certain places or certain professions that you can move into. They're saying to me, take a step right back and look at the situation in you and forget all that you know about yourself and think about it. Let it come from your core, you know, let it come from, it's like the Kundalini rising, you know, let it come from your your deep inside of you, what it is that you need to do right now, what it is that, what it is, that is right for you right now. Because you don't need to actually do be doing the same things that you've been doing already. And you don't need to be in those same relationships that you've been in until now. You simply need to allow yourself, give yourself that birth, that wide birth that you need in order to make your decisions, in order to manifest what it is that you truly desire. And in order to bring in the relationships that you that will truly support you and that you will really enjoy in your life, you know. And you know, the other thing I'm hearing here is prioritize joy, prioritize lightness, prioritize joy. This is really important for you. So yeah, the actual meaning here, the universal law of attraction is managing my expansion. It's, it's basically, you know, if you think broader and if you think wider and if, if you give yourself that birth to think, you know, that wide birth, you step right out of your situation and you're thinking, okay, you know, perhaps I've been working in the medical profession until now, but actually I want to, what I want to do is work in an artistic profession. And then you decide, okay, I'm just going to step right out of this situation and I'm going to imagine myself being in this different environment and see what it would be like. What would my day be like if I worked as an artist or if I practiced something else in my life, something different from what I'm doing? And allow yourself to breathe through this, you know, allow yourself to, uh, to imagine at least and then see how that feels to you. And you know, and from there you can make your decisions, okay? Don't just think, oh, I have, I've studied for this for the last seven years, or I've been doing this for the last 10 years, and now I have to go on on this path because I don't actually, you know, this is what I, oh, this is what I've invested in, so I have to do this. They're saying to me, you know, do, exactly, do not do that. Take, give yourself a break. Step out of your situation. Don't force upon yourself things that you think you must do because you've invested in it, or because society... Uh, expects that from you. Give yourself a moment to actually feel what it is that you really need to do, what it is that you really desire. Where is it that your soul is leading you? And make your decision from there. Okay, there are um, um, messages here at the back of these cards. So I'll just quickly read them. Although I feel like that was the message for you, but I'm going to read this because maybe you will enjoy it if I did. So here in this card, the universal law of attraction is managing my expansion. It says the law of attraction is the universal manager of all vibration, which expands to everything that exists through the universe. And so at the same time that the law of attraction is responding to the vibrational content of your physical thoughts, it is also responding to the vibrational content of your inner being. Okay. So it's almost like saying to me that, you know, because you are at the beginning of this new phase, it's almost like you've got to clean out what's inside of you. You've got to just like clean it out and see what it is that you truly desire. What is it that's, you know, what is it that's really going on? If you have the vibrational essence of hurt and pain or dis or um, disappointment from the past, then you can continue to, um, to, to attract that. Okay. You need to actually cleanse yourself, you know, uh, clear yourself of any kind of vibrations that are not um, conducive to actually what you want, would like to manifest in your life and then start anew. So uh, what am I, what does this one say? So the card here is relationships I don't want. Um, clarify those I do want. 
So let's just read this message here. Whenever you know what you do not want, you always know more clearly what you do want. So in any poignant moment of awareness of another, per of another person's undesirable situation, give your undivided attention to the idea of improvement that has hatched from your interaction observation. And as you learn to do that, not only will you be of increasing value to others, but you will see how your relationship with others add immeasurably to your own becoming. Okay, so here what I'm feeling is that I'm just going to leave this like this in case you want to read it again. I don't know if you'll be able to. Let me just hold it here. Um, so here what I'm hearing is that, okay, you need to be authentic in what you desire, what you truly desire, not what you feel you need to do. You know, because you've been in a relationship with someone for the last four years and your parents know this person, they get along well and they he fits in well or she fits in well with the family. It doesn't mean you need to continue doing this if it's not what you truly, truly desire. OK, so be authentic in your in your actual interactions with people and you will see the, the benefit from that. And this is what I think this card is actually saying as well. So I hope that message has helped you. I feel like it's quite a uh, also quite a distinct message here. And it. I hope it has helped you. I hope it actually resonates with you. And let me know how you're getting on. All right. Ah, just one more thing. This card is the number eight. And this is the number 18. So thank you very much for those of you who come by uh, for the second deck. So for those of you who've uh, chosen the third option, what, it is, what is it that we need to hear for you today? And what is it, what is the answer to the question that's in your heart? Card here is called Making a Difference. It's the caption reads, My inner light shines far and wide. Okay, so the first thing that I thought when I got this card now as I pulled it out was that um, you're at that point in your life where you actually can make a difference, and maybe until now you thought that you wouldn't be able to, or you wouldn't be, or you, whatever you'll be doing doesn't really make a difference. But it's time for you to take responsibility for what you do because it does make a difference. But actually, what the message, what they're trying to say to me right now is that you're, in a, you're at a stage in your life where what you're doing or what you, where you're at, you're actually able to make, to make a contribution to other people's lives um, in a, and, and it's a necessary contribution. So it's something that you can give to them that they need to have right now. You know, you can be in a position where you can be more supportive to others or sharing or more generous because you have the capacity to be able to do so right now. Simply because you have the knowledge, you have the wisdom, you've accumulated certain, just certain experiences um, and skills that enable you right now to be there for others. Um, the other thing I'm hearing here is that uh, well, I've, I've mentioned it already, um, taking responsibility for the contribution that you're making in the world, Take, taking responsibility for you, all that you do, whether you're walking by on the street, whether you smile at somebody on, on the street, or whether you choose to just be in your thoughts as you're walking down the street. How are you making a difference in the most menial, in the most routine, routine or mundane activities in your life? It's not just about making a huge difference, about making a donation to a charity or volunteering at some uh, place where people need your 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 help. It's not about necessarily talking about making a difference in that way or making a difference in such a huge way, but the tone of voice that you use, the smile that you share with someone that maybe makes their day. It's also giving me a scenario here where there's this person who's actually quite shy and is actually quite nervous in social interactions. And it's saying to me that this person, or you, if this is you, needs to be you need to give yourself some credit that you actually are making a contribution, that you actually are there in a capacity that others benefit from you also, that others welcome you also. And you need not to be so um, ensconced in yourself or uh, be not to be so afraid. You need to be able to engage, interact and and give of yourself and, and not be uh, shy to do so. You're not, you don't need to be selfish. You need to actually understand that you can make a difference and that you can actually contribute something and I'm just getting these words over and over again making a difference well what well, that's written here 
benefiting, be benef being beneficial to others, uh, contribution. Contribution is big here. And not uh, don't deny your contribution. I'm hearing that you've been denying your contribution or you think that whatever you have to offer is not good enough or it's not going to make any difference or it's not going to be... Um, you, you don't you underestimate how you, your behavior or how your your demeanor um, actually makes a difference in this world. So pay more attention to how you're going about on your daily basis and how you're actually moving about and what you're doing and and how this impacts on another or how you you know the tone of voice you use with people or the or the way in which you move your body around or the way in which you walk. You know, are you? Are you being sensitive to people who are unwell, or are you are you stomping about in you know in the corridor and um, not thinking about the fact that it might be disturbing other people? So that that's a very very specific message, and perhaps it, it applies to one of you out there. So I'm not saying that all of you are stomping through corridors and being very insensitive to other people's needs here. Please don't uh, hear me wrong, but it's the, there was just an example. It's also just about seeing how you are contributing, how you are. Um, giving to another and I know that you're going to complain that I've repeated myself many times here sometimes I'm saying I'm basically channeling you a message for you right so if they just give me the same message over and over again I'm going to keep saying that until they give me something else okay because it's like I see it like a screen you know that like sometimes I see it like a screen sometimes it's like a visualization um, like it's just an image and so they're like writing something and they keep writing there you know do make a difference don't be shy to make a difference I'm seeing these words all the time and until like each time I see it it's like the board gets cleared again and then they write a new message but what's happening here in your reading is that I keep getting the same words over and over again so I'm, try I'm trying to give you that and then hoping that they give me something more after I've said it but I'm not actually getting anything else right now so um yeah extend a hand as it shows here and recognize that as you as you move in this world it it impacts another it impacts all of us the thoughts that you have the feelings that you have your demeanor the way in which you um, engage with the world you're engaging with all of us and um, so if you engage with that with the world with the world in a gentle manner in a sensitive manner in a in a less aggressive manner or in a manner that's more um, delicate almost that it impacts the world in a more delicate way you know if you are upset about something and you are in your thoughts and you you are being hard on yourself and you, you, you're giving yourself a good old thrashing because you haven't done what you wanted to do. You might think this is just a relationship that you have with yourself and that this is something that um, that is actually not impacting anyone else. But it's not true because if you give yourself a hard time and you go out in the world, everyone picks up that vibration. Everyone with whom you interact picks up that vibration. And sometimes you don't even need to go out in the world for that vibration to emanate from you. Okay, so make a difference by being kind to yourself. Make a difference by being kind and good to others. You know, and I feel like here, you know, this question of how good have you been to yourself? How kindly have you been treating yourself? Is also coming up here. So that's a bit of a different message from what I've been getting so far. Um, but that's also a message that you need to hear right now. This is... It's saying to me also, move with grace, you know, move with, um, move gently, move with grace, move softly, tread gently. So that is the kind of theme that's running through here uh, for you for this week. So I hope that's made a difference to you. <laughs> yeah, I hope that uh, message has uh, helped you in some way and that it's been useful. And I thank you all for coming by today. And I hope that you have a lovely week ahead. I wish you all a lovely time ahead. And uh, may you all go well and be well and be protected and be loved. Okay. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising.